up everybody welcome back to another video and where you guys have been like we don't talk anymore like we okay no kidding um i always like wanted to make this video to address this subject which is about how we can stay up to date with the llm news and the latest technology out there it's kind of hard because all these big companies they just they're like popping up with these events and we see the news every single day on Twitter or LinkedIn. Everything is flooded with more information and how we can sort of stay up to date with all these LLM news. All right, people. So here's the thing. So 2023 and 2024 have been crazy year. A lot of crazy stuff has happened worldwide and to add at top of it like cherry on the top it's been the llm and the ai advent itself which yeah it, it did scare the shit out of people i'm not supposed to say shit on youtube right and yeah all these big names have been competing with each other to like get their hands on the iron throne and that's why you see people parkering around like that's basically it you know uh, everybody have these crazy budgets and they're doing like awesome events, I must say. I have to give it to them. And here's a fact. Um, these news and these updates are hard to keep up with. It's hard to keep up for a software engineer. It's hard to keep up for an, uh, for a ML engineer, for a data scientist. Despite the fact in which field of study you belong to, it's hard to keep up with because it's just a lot. Uh, there are open AI updates, there are Mistral updates, there are Google updates, there are Tropic updates. Uh, then there's Google Gemini, which was barred before. Okay, you have to keep up with such details as well. The biggest question is like, how the hell can I keep up with these details? It's like these big companies are like zombies. They're dragging me everywhere. And they just want a piece of me, like piece of my attention, obviously. Okay, the answer is, and here's the thing, technology is evolving. It's great for us. I know it's not great for everybody because people are scared it's going to eat their jobs. I don't really believe that. It's just like uh, when the calculator was invented or new models of computers have always been, you know, coming out or the new models of smartphones have been coming out. They do replace some redundancy in our daily work, but they cannot sort of actually replace us on a horizon because human creativity and human judgment is still, I believe, a final verdict that you can have within a company because all these LLMs, they do hallucinate, right? So that's their weakness. That's their weakness. So it's great that technology is evolving and uh, love to see that, love great time to be alive um, but quite frankly you don't have to stay updated with every LLM news or every LLM update out there yes you should know who are the key players and what they bring on the table and that's it that's it you can just choose one LLM or if you're already working on a particular project you should know what's your use case specify and which LLM suits your needs and that's it Yes, every six months you get new updates and it's not hard to catch up with. These guys put really quite a huge amount of budget in their events. You would see everywhere like which model was released and what are the key updates or what a particular model really brings on the table. So yeah, and if you're a layman, let me help you out there. Like if you haven't, if you if you just know what AI is, what LLMs are, okay, you know these are large language models, they're kind of smart, they answer stuff. Okay, perfect. Let me help you out. So we have paid models and then we have open source models. Open source models is like an, a whole Pandora box. It's like a whole new world. But at the end of the day, they're just models, either fine-tuned or they just offer, you know, a certain aspect uh, which you can use within your use case. It can be audio, it can be video, it can be specialized text generation, and that's it. Then we have paid models. These are like fancy models. And I can help you understand by relating them to actors. Like for example, Anthropic Claude. And you can think of Anthropic Claude as George Clooney like a seasoned wine, you know, all that black pepper and stuff, you know. So when you talk to Anthropics Claude, 
You feel like you're talking to an actual adult. That's the best thing about Claude. It has great interpretation skills. It has great communication skills. So that's the biggest factor uh, that really pulls in people or drives people towards Anthropic's Claude. Let's talk about OpenAI's GPT-4 or GPT-40. It's more like Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, he has some hits and misses, but he's good. He's actually good. And he's so good that some people just fail to admit that he's that good. And that's the reason uh, because of which it took him so long to win an Oscar. Whatever you do, just don't tell you're 24 years old. All right, then we are with Meta's Llama 3, which is more like Keanu Reeves. He's everywhere. You can see him in a cyberpunk game. You would see him in an, you know, an action franchise. You would see him in rom-coms. The guy is accessible. You would see him in a metro. Uh, just like Llama 3, it's in your WhatsApp, it's in your Instagram, it's in your Facebook. It's everywhere. It's easy, you know, you can just talk to the guy just like that. Hey, hey man, what's up? Dude's a great guy. And then we have Mistral's 7B. So many open source models like uh, 7B Instruct, 8B. Uh, by the way, B here means billion, which means billion parameters. Like a model has been trained on uh, billion parameters. So Killian Murphy, I would say he's he's a dude serious about his craft. Yeah. So that's like that's more like Mistral. Dude's always like segregated within award shows. And he's he's not interested in small talk. He's kind of serious about what he does. So, yeah, that's 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 a good thing going on about Mistral. And that's it. These are the top most LLMs that are right now present within the uh AI landscape were like leading uh, different areas of their own. They're leading different leaderboards and stuff. And pretty much they're making quite a lot of money for themselves as well. So what do you need to do that? Yes, these LLMs, uh, they can do all kinds of jobs, but they're not magic. They have some limitations. They can generate text. Yes, they are smart. They can also hallucinate and they have a certain knowledge cutoff dates, which means they're trained up till either 2023 start of the year or by the end of 2023. So they always have to catch up, catch up to us, catch up to the real world. So that's that's the thing. And they can read stuff. When I say read, it just means extract information. Like uh, they can read through pictures, they can read through videos, audios. And some of these models are like for free. Uh, for example, the open source models, you can find uh, models specific to read audios, videos, even pictures or generate images. So some of these paid models uh, can ask you for money to actually uh, provide you the service of reading through images, videos and stuff, or even generating images. But you can always find open source models uh, within like Hugging Face. There are so many uh, AI specific websites out there where you can find certain models and you can use these models as well, uh, which can either generate pictures for you, generate specific or specialized text for you, uh, read through audios or videos for free. But if you're like lazy, then you can spend some buck on these paid models, which is not a lot. Uh, I think the range between uh, $20 to like $25. So the average is more like $20. So $20 a month. So yeah, that's one thing. So AI or artificial intelligence in general has become more like awareness. So you just need to know the possibilities and the tools that can help you achieve those possibilities that can help complement a particular use case within your product or your project. And that's it. You don't have to chase a particular LLM and stick to it or just wait for the updates and go through those updates. Uh, if it's a hobby, sure. But as a professional, you don't really need it. Alongside, there are a few important terms that you should know. Uh, if you know them, it's definitely going to help you. Uh, the most recurring term is RAG. You'll see RAG this, RAG that. Uh, so RAG basically means retrieval augmented generation, and it's used for specific use cases where the data is tied to the scope. For example, you might have policies document uh, within your company and you want uh, to create a chatbot which extracts those details out of those policies and present the user in a more creative way. 
So you're not leaving the LLM open-ended. You're actually closing the scope of the knowledge for that LLM. So that's RAG. And then we have embeddings. Uh, and, and like I stated earlier, that most of these models can read through pictures, audios, and videos. And again, it's not magic. Firstly, they convert these entities into embeddings, which is more like a, a vector structure or more like a vector matrices. And they then it applies some formulation through which it can extract relevant data out of these entities. Another term would be vector database. So vector database is basically uh, an entity which stores all these embeddings and it provides you some formulations through which you can find relevant details uh, and query it up for those relevant details. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground here. So eventually all these LMs out there would become normalized. Some of them are actually on their way of becoming normalized. For example, Llama 3, uh, which is being normalized. It's available within your WhatsApp. It's available within your Instagram, Facebook. Google's Gemini would eventually be available within Google's Workspace and even Google Search. Uh, since they've been rolling out AI overviews within the Google search. GPT-4 is already available in Bing and eventually every platform would have a specific LLM attached to it or a specific LLM serving a platform. So that's how it's going to be. Yes, there can be certain aspects which are being offered by one LLM as, and it's not offered by another LLM, but eventually I believe all these LLMs would come to uh, to this one point where they provide you uh, similar services. So again, uh, knowing what these LLMs can do and what their limitations are is the key learning. And the best way to learn is to keep up with the blogs or just to keep up with these LLMs in a yearly manner and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything. So yeah, the motive of this video was to let you know that no, you're not missing out on anything and there's no such thing as LLM apocalypse. All these new advancements are a part of a journey where the technology is evolving and we just have to, you know, just wait, sit back and, you know, watch the show. I hope this video gives you a perspective uh, and yeah, good talk. I'll see you in the next one.